I'm going on a weight loss journey. It's 2020. It's been nine years since I've felt good. Uh, it's just one of those things I've always struggled with in my life. My dad was heavy. My grandpa was heavy. My great grandpa was heavy. And uh, whatever it is, you know, I've gone through my phases, my ups and downs, but uh, the last eight, nine years have really been uh, one of the up phases as in <laughs> gaining lots of weight um, and I'm kind of tired of it and uh, my wife and I are hoping to go on a honeymoon style trip uh, for our 40th birthday year next February and um, when we got married we went up to Traverse City it was the middle of winter <laughs> so we've always kind of wanted to do the tropical vacation thing for a honeymoon so obviously we want to Feel and look great for that. So I'll be documenting my journey. So I started this journey back on January 6th, which is the kind of the day that we all went back to school. And uh, I'm basically trying to get back to what I was doing nine years ago, kind of that same sort of mentality slash diet. Um, it worked for me for the most part because I went really hard during the week. You know, I, I ate very well. I ate uh, small portions. I tried to limit my calories to uh, like 12 to 1500 a day. And then I was doing like two hours of physical fitness most days, sometimes even a little bit more than that, trying to get some two a days in. And it's a lot of work during the week, but you know, perseverance. And uh, that afforded me an opportunity on the weekends to cheat a little bit, you know, not, not huge, not nothing major, but you know, uh, still wake up in the morning on a Saturday and have a smoothie for breakfast and have something light for lunch, you know, but, uh, you know, maybe, uh, have some pizza on Saturday, have a couple of beers or whatever, uh, watch the game, have some wings. Um, you know, it's, it, it just made it so that it didn't seem like it was going to be months and months and months of, of smaller portions and, and really, demanding yeah really demanding i mean it's demanding when you're when you're uh, like i am i mean it's uh it's it's hard to kind of control those things so uh with it looking like it might be three four months down the road to get this weight loss you know it's um it just gave me a little bit of something to kind of look forward to after a hard week uh and then right you know when monday would come back around i'd get right back into it and hit it hard again so um you know, that's kind of kind of what I'm going for again this time, and uh, <laughs> hoping that this time I can learn again more lessons. You know, uh, it's kind of a shame sometimes uh, when you you go through all that and you you work hard and you lose that weight and uh, you kind of get comfortable again. You know, and before you know it, it just sneaks right back on. Getting ready to head down for my workout. One of the things I typically do this time of year. Since it's cold and there's ice and snow on the road, as I like to walk on the treadmill, as opposed to running, I put it on max incline and uh, really gets my heart rate up to about 140, which is, you know, really good aerobic uh, level for my current weight and height and age. So I'm going to head down to the treadmill, pound out another hour of walking. I just finished up my hour on the treadmill, a little bit over an hour, and I'm gonna probably do a little bit of strength training with some of the weights that I got. Now, for me, all these diet feds and trends and whatever, you know, it's like, for me, it's always been calories in, which is the problem, and calories out. 
I have no problem uh, being active, you know, going for hikes and going for runs occasionally. I love to bike ride and uh, go hiking and stuff. And uh, But after I do all that, you know, just like, I just want to eat, man. I'm starving. My dinner tonight is a uh, spaghetti squash taco bowl. Veggies, veggies, lean ground turkey. Avocado, peppers, cheese. Try to go for the uh, high uh, density, nutrient density foods. When I was a kid, like up until fifth grade, basically, I was pretty, pretty physically fit, you know, pretty thin like my kids are now. And, uh, Pretty active, you know, played soccer, had lots of friends, everything was really good, and then middle school hit, and uh, I don't know, you know, just changes in um, physiology, and uh, packing the weight on, you know, got a little bit heavier in sixth grade, heavier still in seventh grade, and that just continued on uh, throughout my secondary education, and you know, it's tough um, when you're a heavier kid, you know, I guess I let it get to me, and my self-esteem was down, and I let uh, people bully me, and uh, just kind of uh, shaped, you know, the person that I became. I was really antisocial for many years. I uh, didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, my idea of a great night was being in my dad's basement uh, with the TV and the home theater system going, watching movies, and uh, just hanging out by myself. Uh, once I got my driver's license, it really kind of catapulted me. It was about the same time in my life, 16 years old, my junior year of high school, when uh, I met some foreign exchange students and, you know, I think because they were coming into a new situation, um, not really knowing anyone else, uh, and they were trying to make some friends too, and got to be buddy-buddy with a couple of those guys and, and gals, and uh, at the same time, like I said, I had my license, so I wanted to be able to go out and do fun stuff and feel good about myself, and so, you know, I kind of started working out, and back then it was the low-fat diet, you know, my dad like I said before, was a heavier guy, and he'd always go through his diet phases too, and there was a pretty big period in our house where everything was fat-free this and fat-free that, and that was the biggest thing, like, hey, man, as long as you're eating fat-free, you're good, <laughs> and exercising, you know, so I was like, still have tacos uh, with, like, lean meat and fat-free sour cream and fat-free cheese and salsa and whatnot, you know, it's like, all right, so that was diet fad number one in my life and it helped me lose a little bit I mean I don't remember exactly what my numbers were back then but uh, I do know that that year uh, junior year of high school uh, really kind of helped um, push me forward a little bit with wanting to be a little bit more social in my life and not be such a hermit and then my senior year going into that I was running at home uh, exercising and trying to do the diet thing still and one day I was sitting in the lunchroom and uh, I was bringing my lunch from home, packing turkey sandwiches on whole wheat bread or something, maybe some fat-free mayo or whatever. And uh, this kid comes up to me and uh, says, dude, you should join the swim team. I'm like, what do you mean swim team? I've never swam in my life. I, I can't be on a swim team. I'm, I'm not like a swimmer. He's like, oh man, dude, we'll take anyone. So uh, that guy ended up being my good buddy, Darren. And uh, I said, okay, you know, I'll try it and got on the swim team and that first week was hell it was hell I mean it was I didn't think I was going to survive I thought I was going to die really my heart was beating faster than ever I couldn't hardly breathe we're doing all these things dropping to the bottom of the pool bobbing back up then back down do that all the way from the shallow end to the deep end swimming thousands of yards a day and uh, I was on the brink of failure of giving up of quitting and uh I think it was probably my cousin Brad talking to me, and he said, dude, just stick it out, man. It's going to get easier. It'll get easier. Stick it out. And then at the same time, you know, I didn't want to feel like a failure and uh, kind of go back into being a social outcast, so uh, I, did, I did hang with it. And that was the year that was like best physical fitness of my life, man, swimming 5,000 yards, 7,000 yards. I could eat whatever I wanted back then and wouldn't gain a pound. I was losing weight. I got down to like 140 pounds. And, uh, you know, that was a good point, but life goes on, right? You graduate, 
you uh, start going to college, you uh, meet a girl, you're in college, you're starting to party a little bit more, getting invited out, doing more drinking, doing more late night eating. And uh, so, you know, I don't know how long it took, but I went from being like 140, 150 high school swimmer, 5 foot 11, which apparently, according to the experts, is like normal weight. <laughs> but um, I shot up probably into the 160s, 170s. And then, you know, a couple years later, I'm in the 190s again. <clears throat> And, then, you know, that was a going through college and then working, and I joined a gym and all that, and up and down, you know. It's like 175 to 195 probably for, for five to eight years. And then uh, kind of got settled into married life and had our first kid. <clears throat> and then um, we had our second kid and uh, went out to Philadelphia. And then I don't know what it was about that, but... I just got triggered and I was hanging out with this guy, Brian, and he uh, he suggested that maybe we do a weight loss challenge with, you, with each other. And, you know, the first person to get down to, I think it was 165 for me and it was 160 for him because I was a little bit heavier at the time or something than he was. So I said, sure, man. I was working for the county and I could uh, take my hour long uh, county uh, forced unpaid lunch break. And I joined a gym again one that had multiple locations that I could get into. And I really, that's when I started this, this diet, this whole, uh, you know, hitting it hard during the week and giving myself a little bit more freedom on the weekend, but still being smart about what I'm eating. And uh, sure enough, it was like January, middle of January, maybe February sometime, early February, maybe we started that. And I was 190 or 195 at the time. And uh, by... By the end of April, like May-ish, I had achieved my goal and got down to 165. And, uh, you know, take a look at some of these pictures here and you'll see it was, uh, you know, looking really good, feeling good about myself. I remember when I got down to that 165 and I told myself, I actually took a bunch of clothes out of my closet, and a lot of uh, my fat boy clothes. And I took them to Goodwill and I told my wife, I said, I'll never need these again. I'm never going to let this happen to me again. Well, you know, <laughs> famous last words of a fool, life changes, got a new job, started working for a uh, school system as the food service director, and uh, it was really stressful. I had a boss, very stressful guy. Uh, <laughs> I was stressed out all the time. I mean, I, I went into that situation as the assistant director, and the woman that I was supposed to be training with was actually being forced to retire. It wasn't voluntary, so I did not get uh, treated very well, and it led to a lot of uh, stress every day going in there, knowing that she had no uh, good feelings toward me, didn't want me there at all. So uh, I basically had no more lunch break anymore. Uh, two kids at home now. Um, 2014, had our third son, and doing the food service thing, sitting in front of a desk a lot, um, working on menus and doing paperwork and just uh, getting home and being tired and stressed out and eating dinner and then drinking quite a few beers every night and eating some more and then going to bed. And that's where this huge shitfall happened where, you know, I, I went from probably being about 175, 180 when I started that job uh, probably about 170, 175. I, I really hadn't gained that much weight until I started that job. And here, that was August of 2012. And here we are, January of 2020. And, uh, I'm up to 243 and a half pounds, which is obviously the heaviest I've ever been in my life. So I hadn't weighed myself in a while. I guess, you know, I kind of knew that I wasn't doing well, and I didn't really want to see that number. But I remember hearing or reading some time ago, maybe it was my cousin, you know, he's always been very good with his health and maintaining a good weight. But uh, somebody said, you know, you should continue to weigh yourself no matter what. Even if you're not really dieting or working out, like, get on that scale. Make it a habit. Because you'll see those numbers start to go up. <laughs> and... Maybe for some people, and maybe even it would have been for me, enough of a kick in the ass to say, hey, dude, you can't just go back to the old habits. 
you got to keep going, man. Keep working out. Keep watching those portions. Keep eating healthier foods and lay off the fast food and stuff. And uh, it's probably a great idea. Maybe uh, that's one of those lessons that I'll learn this time. And I won't get rid of that scale or put it in a corner and let, let it get dust all over itself. So, you know, uh, this is uh, another downward time to go, man. Time to go because I'm tired of looking like this. making a uh, like a vegetarian warm grain bowl yeah all right so veggies broth are in there garnish it with some green onions and a little bit of sriracha Friday morning it's time for my weekly weigh-in uh, every Friday morning try to try to get it weight on the scale that's when I weigh myself so this is like the first one uh, after my baseline last Friday, which I took, you know, about a week after I started just because I wanted to kind of get all the water weight and whatever out of my system before I started to kind of really get a good baseline goal as to where I was. So I'll head into the bathroom and see where we're at.